Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. As well as my friends at yarnspirations.com. This is the Bernat Make This. This is a cardigan designed for beginners. Now, if you're familiar with our work, you'll notice that this particular PDF is different than what we've been normally working because Yarnspirations is making an active effort to be able to teach new crocheters that may not have access to people like you and I to be able to crochet. So you will notice is that the patterns are extremely detailed as you go and there's lots and lots of photographs and extra large print for those uh, that will need that and you will notice a lot of great things. So this particular cardigan is in the style for 2023 and 24 and you are going to notice is that this is available from extra small to five extra large. So you'll have the colors that you'll have with the breakdown and I'm going to show you a little bit more detail now. Over the past several years, you will notice in Yarnspiration's designs, if you're not colorblind, is that you will see that there's a color differentiate, uh, differential between all of the different sizes. So you'll see this color for extra small, and then medium large, this color, and so on. So whenever there's a change in the pattern to be made, you're going to notice is that there's a color difference in the pattern itself. So let's take a look, and we got lots and lots of pages here, and we're looking for where we see that. So we're going to see it later on right here. So it says, repeat the last hexagon round three, three, five, and five. You will choose the color or the order that matches the size. So you have the extra small all the way to five extra large. So what I like to do is that I like to go through the pattern in advance and just circle the number that I want to do with a pen. And you will notice is that there's a crochet diagram that's available for you. And this particular hexi, you're going to notice as well that it does not sit flat. It sits like this because the extra space when it's folded properly will look like this. So if it's a regular hexagon that doesn't have any give to it, it won't be able to do this shape. So this is one half of the cardigan that you'll see. And then if you keep on following, it shows you how to do the seams, which we will cover today. And you'll continue to do the bottom hem and more and more and more to the very end to be able to enjoy it. So these are called stitch diagrams and they help just to showcase the journey as you're working your way through it. So when you're looking at this particular sweater, you're actually looking at two hexagons. So they're both identical. They both change at the same time. For illustration purposes, what I did for myself is that I went ahead in the pattern and I actually did the color breakdown and you were going to notice is that the small to small size or extra small to small has 16 rounds, medium large has 18 rounds, extra large to three extra large has 21 and five, four to five extra large is 24 rounds. You're going to notice six rounds of color A, four rounds of color B, and so forth. So I broke it out for you just in case you don't see it on the pattern itself. And so this is a great way. So if you just want to do one color, then you can do 16, 18, 21, and 24 rounds. If you have yarn that is self-striping, you can also just do those amount of rounds just in case you don't want to change the color. So today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to get started. I will show you how to change out the color. And once you understand the one round, it's just basically repeating that over and over until the cows come home. And without further ado, we're going to dive right in. You'll need a five millimeter size H crochet hook today and we are using here on the on the camera after you throw your hook on the floor we're using Bernat Super Value yarn. These are the colors that you'll see and this is a great day to get started. On page number four you're going to notice is that make a granny square squatch. So they're asking you to make a granny square. So if you just go on YouTube you can find how to make a granny square. You'll use your five millimeter size H crochet hook and then the yarn that is suggesting and you are just going to complete the instructions just like you see. So this is a regular granny square and at the end of it what you need to do is take a measurement. If it measures three and a half inches or less go up a hook size or two and if it measures more than four inches, then you're going to want to decrease your um, granny or your hook size in order to get lower. So it's a great way to be able to do this. I think this one is really kind of designed just to kind of just, you know, be free flowing and you can decide that for yourself. Let's grab our yarn and let's play. So you're going to notice on page number six, you have all the visuals. This kind of stuff you normally buy in a, in a book, but it's available to you free on all the step-by-step -step instructions. But of course, this is a tutorial, so I'll be able to rip you through here really quite quickly to be able to demonstrate. Once we get to round number three, it's just a repeating of the instruction until the cows come home and you can go as big or as little as you need to, but follow the instructions for the sizing to match it to the person. 
So let's begin. And even though this is a beginner pattern, we have tutorials available for beginners. And you can uh, use those if you want to. They're here on our channel. And I'm just going to get yourself started. And we're going to chain four to begin. So we have one, two, three, and four. And insert the hook into the beginning chain and yarn over, pulling through everything, and this forms the center ring of your hexagon. Make sure that the tail will just wrap around the outside of the ring just like that, and we'll begin round number one just in a moment. Round number one, you're going to chain three, and that'll count as a double crochet, and in the same circle, apply two more double crochet in there. There's gonna be a lot of stitches going into the center, which will cause it to buckle within a few rounds that you'll see pretty quickly. So this is considered one side of six for the hexagon. To turn the corner in this thing, always, it's going to be chain two, and in the center of the ring again, put three more double crochet to create another side. Noticing that I'm pinching this around the ring. You won't have to sew it in later. So what do we need to do to turn the corner? Chain two. And then three more in, and this will be the third of six sides. And now we're running out of center space because that's normal. So I'm gonna let this straggler just fall out to the back of it and just pull on these because it's just around the ring. Pull it and expose more ring. Okay, don't be scared of it. So chain two and put three more double crochet in to the ring. So this is technically the fourth side and the other two sides you'll add will cause it to really squish in there. So chain two and again, pull on it and add three more double crochet in. This is a pentacon now because it's five sided. Pull on it again, chain two, and the last side will go in, and it'll be three more double crochet. At the end, we're going to chain two, and we're going to join it to the top of the first chain three. And so you can see there's a lot of stuff going in there, so make sure you can count six uh, groups of double crochet. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Let's begin round number two. Round number two, we want to get to always the corner space. So right where we're sitting, we're sitting on the top of this one. So we need to slip stitch over the next two, double crochet, and slip and in, stitch into the chain two space. And this is where we begin. To start, you're going to chain three, that's your first double crochet, and put two more double crochet into the corner. So we need to turn the corner, so we're gonna chain two, and in the same space, apply two more, I sorry, apply three more double crochet. Everything's in groups of three. That corner is now done. So we're only gonna chain one to create a space and we're going to go to the next chain two space here and apply another corner. And it will be three double crochet. Chain two and three double crochet. That corner is now done, chain one, and then do the next one. So do this all the way around. So each one of these spaces has three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, and I'll be right back in a moment. Okay, when you get to the last space, you have three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. Don't forget you have to chain one first and then just join it to the top of the first chain three. Okay, 
And so now you can see that it's sitting flat, but it won't sit flat for very much longer. In the next round, you're gonna to start to see it kind of go wonky, which is what you're looking for. So to start a new round, number three, let's go. So all rounds now right to the end are the same. So you're just gonna slip stitch over to get to the corner. Once you're in the corner, chain three and put in two double crochet. And because it's a corner and we need to turn, we need to chain two. And then put three more double crochet in. Now the only difference between this round and all the rest of them is that the amount of spaces before you get to the next corner increases by one every time you go around. So chain one and in the space, because it's not a corner, just put in three double crochet into that space. Chain one, and now the next one is a corner, so that's your regular three double crochet. Chain two, three double crochet. So you're just keeping an eye on the corners. If you don't see where those are, then just put a stitch marker there or something to indicate with you what it is, but you should be able to see it. Okay, so that's done. Chain one, look for the space because it's not a corner. It's three double crochet in. Okay, chain one and then it's a corner again. So you're noticing it's kind of starting to do this. That's exactly what you're looking for. So in the corners, put in your three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, followed by chain one spaces between things. And if it's not a corner, just put in three double crochet, just like I showed you here, and go all the way around for round number three. So at the end of number three, don't forget to chain one after this last one. The corner's already done. Slip stitch it to the first. So this would be considered three rows, or three rounds, one, two, and three. And so with the different sizes, we need to complete a, a certain amount here in order to do that. So let me take you to the sheet. It's sitting flat for now, relatively, but it will get all roughly. Let me take you back to the reference sheet. So with the first color, we need six rounds. We're currently at three. For the extra small to small, medium, large, we need six rounds. Okay, so we already have three done, so you just got three more. The extra large to three extra large, there's seven rounds, so I need to do um, four more. And with five, to, uh, four to five extra large, it's seven rounds, so I need to do four more. So once you get those done, you're going to have to change your color, and then you'll do four rounds of B, four rounds of B, four rounds of B, four rounds of B. So that's consistent with all of them. And then you can see the breakdown here, and that's available on my website if you see the more information link of this video. So you'll be able to do that. So let's just say that I'm ready to change the color. What am I gonna do to do that? And what we have to do is be able to get rid of one yarn and replace it with the next, and I'll show you how to do that. So let's just say I wanna change out the color. So because you know the number of rounds that I showed you, you can change the color pretty much at any time as long as both of the, the um, um, hexagons are the same size. So I'm just going to finish off this yarn and you're going to want to use a tapestry needle. So if you can't identify what is the right side of a project, just grab a spare piece of yarn. And this is the right side that we've been working around and around in. So if you can't identify this in the future, simply just put your hook in behind and a spare piece of yarn and just attach it. So whenever you see this, you'll know that this is the right side of the work. So when you're wearing this cardigan, this is the side that people will see. Okay, so what we have here is that we have this tail. We're going to need a tapestry needle, which this is, and turn it over to the back of the cardigan, okay, or the hexagon, if you wanna say. And we're gonna feed this through. And it's not good enough just to feed this yarn through the, 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 the strands. You need to break apart the plies as well. Okay, so when you go through, don't concentrate on getting between the stitches. Make sure you break up those plies because it helps it to get stuck even better. Okay, so you'll technically do this at the end of the first color change that is suggested in the pattern. I'm just doing it early just to show you. And then I'll show you how to start a new color. So you wanna go back and forth three times and then you can safely cut it down. If you went over top of the center like I showed you, you can just safely cut that too. And now we're going to turn it over 
and we're going to start right in a corner with a new color, which I'll show you in a second. Once you're ready for a new color, create a slip knot already that's in play and put it onto your hook. And you want to go right into a corner space. So normally what we've been doing is that we've been slip stitching to get to the corner, but because this is a brand new color, just start right in the corner itself. And you are going to put your hook into the corner, chain two space, pull this yarn and attach it. That's attached with a slip stitch if you ever see that in the future. Now you're going to chain three, that's your double crochet. And then you are going to put in two double crochet like you normally would have. So now everything is exactly what I showed you before. So because this is the first corner, chain two. And noticing that I'm crocheting right up over the tail and so if you do that, you can hide in your, your ends just quite easily and just throw it through a tapestry needle just to secure it better at the end. It's a wearable, so you'll wanna do that. You're gonna chain one, and this time, because it's round number four, there's two spaces before you get to the next corner. So then you'll put in three double crochets in each of those spaces and make sure that you chain one in between Okay, to create the space that you'll use in the future. And so you're gonna go all the way around and you'll do exactly how you did it with the, the pink here. You'll get to the top of this one and then you'll have to slip stitch and do the corner again. So I want you now to complete all of the sequence now to the end of the final color. And so you'll either have 16 rounds, 18, 21, or 24. And I have a sample already done. So I will show you that in just a moment. So on screen is my example and you see how it's buckling. That's exactly what happens with this because of the stitch work. And so that's exactly what we're looking for. So if this is laying completely flat, something's wrong. So what I have here, this is the right side of the work. I can tell through experience, but if you couldn't, you will have your stitch marker in like I showed you to do. So you'll be able to identify that. So you need to have two of these before you go. I've decided to do the extra small, the small, just to make this a speedy uh, process for filming. And now our process now, we're going to continue along. So now that I have two of these, we're going to have to now work on our next step. And that's coming up next. So our next step is now to fold this and you'll see that in the instructions as well. Make sure you can see the right side of the work right here. So when you fold it, it's going to be the wrong side of the work that will come up. And when you fold it, it will create an L shape just like you see. So you're looking at the inside of the sweater. So it tells us in, in the instruction that this dimension here should either be, depending on your size, 10 and a half, 12, 14 and a half, or 16 and a half. Let's just for, say, for example, that this is the small and it's kind of just short a little bit. Don't be scared to go another round of the, the blue color just to make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so don't be scared to do that. So you wanna to get to the right size because if you do all this work and then you realize it's too small here, it's not gonna get any bigger later. So now that this here is folded with the other side here, like with the, the wrong side facing, I wanna fold the other one as well in the same direction, but with the opposite so that the wrong side is facing up, but over here. So on screen now, this is now folded. I'm looking at the wrong side. So in the instructions, what they say is with the right side facing, this is the right side. These are facing each other. That's what that means with the right side facing. And because I used the same color sequence, it looks like it's gonna belong. So what we have to do is use the same color here to be able to join this right from the top edge all the way down to the back of the seam. So if you're ever confused in any way, what you can do, just grab another piece of yarn and you can just go through the corner piece here and here and I do this because I'm that special and what I'll do is that I'll create a bow tie and so I know that this corner belongs to each other so just in case I'm moving around or I come back to it I will know that this uh, corner belongs to this corner and I will do the same with the opposite side here at the base so that I'm only going to sew on this edge. So let's begin to do that next. So we're going to grab a spare piece of yarn and so I've opened the jacket just slightly so the two layers are not directly over top of each other and I'm going to go here and this is called the whip stitch. Now with the yarn that you want to attach this yarn is going to disappear because it's the same color. So create a slip knot to begin and the other side. So it says to give the length of the top of the sweater and 
So you need enough stitches to be able to whip stitch around. And you can see that in the instructions. So now the stitches will match each other as you're working your way all the way across this back seam. So we're looking at the inside of the, the jacket. So now that I'm ready to sew this together, I am going to go into the corner. Okay, so you can go right into a corner itself and a corner itself. And because I have a slip stitch on the opposite side of the strand, when I get to there, I want to push it through to the slip stitch and this will lock that together. So I'm not gonna pull it tight and this will close the slip stitch onto itself. I'm gonna move the tail out of the way and we'll sew that in later. So every stitch matches each other. Matches each other. So you're gonna go into this stitch on this side and then the stitch on this side, directly across. And because it's the same color, it's gonna blend. Okay, so stitch this side. So you're just gonna match the stitch to stitch. So if there's a chain one space, just match the space. Okay, so you're gonna work your way all the way down the seam. And don't be scared to pull on it because once you pull on it, it will really disappear. So this is a chain one space, so go right into the chain one on this side, chain one on this side, and keep going all the way down the edge, just like that. And don't be scared to pull on it to really push it together. I'll be right back. So I'm coming close to the end of this side. And so we're going to be ending at the base here. You could have started on the bottom and gone up too. It's up to you on where you want it to start. And when we get to the end, we need to get rid of this tail end and to be able to sew it in. You notice how it's kind of like doing a phone cord kind of thing? Well, for those in my generation, if this is happening to you, just don't be as scared to be able to twist it, to give it the twist back to the yarn so it keeps its strength. If you let it untwist and you're doing it untwisted, um, every fiber operates on its own, and so therefore it can compromise the strength of the yarn. So I don't know why it does that. You can leave me a comment on why it does that. So I'm gonna go right to the very end, and because I went right into a space on both on the first side, when I come through, I wanna just loop through and pull tight and then I'm going to tie this into a little knot on this side so it doesn't want to come out. Okay, don't be afraid to pull on it. And then I'm going to drag this on this side so don't let that needle hit the other side of the work. So if you turn it over and you see this coming through, you're too deep. So just come through. So you're going to go through once. And twice and then do a third time and then trim it. So please do that and I'll be right back. So now that my back seam is done, I wanna weave in any tails that I have. And now I'm going to, on the top piece here, so the armpit would be right here, I am going to sew these two by themselves. So these two where they match, I'm gonna go right to the end to the end and I'm just going to sew along the top and this will close it off so that you'll have your arms coming out of here and then you'll do the same with the other side. So it's exactly what I just showed you and please sew those up now. So once the top seams are done, you're just going to flip it. So flip the whole jacket so that you're looking at the good side of the work. So this is the right side and you, if you marked it with a stitch marker, you'll be able to see that as well. And so what we want to do is we want to start with the hems. So we're going to start at the very base first and we're going to be working with a total of eight rows and the colors are same for everybody. So it's going to be two rows of C, two rows of B, two rows of A, and two rows of D. So I'm gonna to have to show you how to jump across the seam line at the base, and we're going to start with the right side facing you. So just make sure that the outside of the jacket, the good side, or the right side is facing you as you begin to do the hem. And let's start off with our first color. So let's begin, and you're gonna start right off on a corner, and you're going to use the color C. In my case, it was this color right here. And so I'm going to join it right into a chain two space at the corner here and just slip stitch to attach and chain three. And then put two more double crochet into that same piece. So you're going to work across like this was the granny. So you're just gonna chain one and then put three 
doubles into the next and chain one and three doubles into the next and etc. So I'll see you at the back of the seam line in just a moment. When you get close to the seam line, you're just still gonna chain one and you're gonna come to the chain two space before the seam line and put in three double crochet. Chain one, then come to the space on the other side of the seam line, put three double crochet. Chain one and keep on moving across. So now we've just spanned across the seam line so you'll never have to deal with that again. And we will be back in a moment at the end of the line. So I'm coming to the end of the line and we cannot go any further, so chain one. And so there's two rows for every color and there's only four colors, so there's eight rows. So right at the very last one, put in your three double crochet, just like how you started. And then that will be the end of round or our row number one. We wanna keep this color going, so we're just gonna turn around and go back in the opposite direction. And so for row number two, whenever you have it, you're gonna chain four. So one, two, three, four. So that counted as a double crochet and a chain one space. And you're gonna start immediately in this space right here. And then you'll just put in your three double crochet in. And just blaze your way all the way across. You don't have to worry about the seam line. So chain one in between them and do this all the way across. And I'll see you at the end of the row and we'll change out our colors at that point. So I'm getting to the end of the row. So these are the two colors or two rows using the first color. And so I'm gonna go right to the very end. So slamming in my three double crochet. And then you are going to chain one and apply one double crochet right into the end. And this will leave an open hole very much like it was here. So let's get rid of this color, weave in your ends, and we'll start you with row number three, and then rows two and three are going to be the repeat then for the instruction, and you need to make sure there's two um, rows for every color. So turn your work, I'll weave in my tails later, and I'm using my next color, and so I'm gonna do two rows of this. So because this is an open space like it was in the beginning, we're just going to attach it, and chain three. That's your first double crochet and put two more double crochet in. Okay, then you do what you normally would have done then going across is that you'll chain one and then put in three double crochet in the next space. So please do that same thing going across and I'll see you at the end of the row and then I'll lay the rest of these uh, for the bottom hem for you to finish on your own. So when you get to the end, you'll have a gap so you'll put your three double crochet into that gap. So because I need two rows of every color, I'm just gonna automatically turn around and then just start by chaining four. So one, two, three, four, and then come into the next space. So you're creating what you already created before. So please uh, go through all of your uh, rows, finish off, and then I'll see you on the sleeve in just a moment. So I've already done one sleeve in advance and you're going to notice is that it is a total of eight rounds for all sizes. So we have A, B, C, and D, and they're all just two rounds each. The trick to this is when you start this, you wanna start it at the armpit area. So just follow it out with the fold and then that's where you're going to begin your journey. So as you're working your way through here, you're going to always start and stop at the same spot so that you keep the seam line for that underneath the sleeve. So let's begin and I'll show you and you're gonna repeat the both first uh, for both sides of the arms. So let's start this sleeve. So here is the fold with the arm, here is the top. And so I wanna start on the underside. So I'm just gonna put my hook here and get my first yarn ready in order to play. So as you begin this journey, you're going to start with the right side facing out, which is the good side when people are wearing it. And this will establish us to do the rounds. We're going to attach, chain three, and then two double crochet into the same space. So you're still only working with the spaces and we're gonna be working in rounds just very much like you were doing on the hexagonal stuff. So you're going to just chain one, jump to the next space. So keep doing that. I'll see you at the top of the seam line where the top of the shoulder has been already sewn and I'll show you how to jump over. And it's, it's the same as doing it in the backside as well. So I'll see you there in a moment. 
As you come across the top, just chain one. So you're gonna to go to the space before the seam line. Man, my desk is a mess. Chain one, and then go to the space after the seam line, put it in your three. And so now it's been established, so you don't have to ever worry about that anymore. Chain one, and then just keep moving down and go around, and I'll see you at the end of the round in a moment. Little tip for you, I have a tendency when I go in circles that I always pick up the project on my lap, I turn the whole thing around, but what you can do, even with afghans when you're doing this kind of concept, take out your hook and rotate it back around the other way. Let the yarn fall naturally where it's supposed to fall and then continue and it's much easier than having to turn the whole project around on your lap. Just a little tip for you today. So I'm coming all the way around, just chain up one and slip stitch to the top of the first chain three. So we have to get to this space here with this same color. So we're gonna slip stitch over like we did, like we were doing the hexagonal. And then you're going to chain three and put two double crochet in. And then continue with what you already know. So chain one and go into every space. You don't have to worry about a seam line anymore. And you're gonna go all the way around with this color and this will be color A, done. And then you're gonna do the rest with B, C, and D. The same thing, I'll be right back. Coming all the way around on this color. So there's two rounds are complete. And then that's it for this color. So just chain one and join to the top of the chain three. So you wanna weave in your ends carefully because this is a wearable. So make sure that you do that. And so what I want to call your attention to is that I want you to start in the same spot of doing all of these um, in the armpit area. Okay, I'm just gonna weave this in real quick and come back through and then I'll just crochet right over it and then just use a tapestry needle to secure that. So do you see how this looks abnormal? This is the starting chain. So when you go to start the next uh, two rounds, you're going to start right here in this gap and do exactly what you did here. And then when you get around, you'll slip stitch over and then you will chain up three and then put in your two double crochet and etc. to do that. So you wanna stay within this right here. Okay, so please do now rounds, uh, the next six rounds. And so it'll be two of B, two of C, and two of D, and I'll be right back. This will go pretty quickly because the distance going around is actually much shorter than the back.